It's the first show of 2021, and we're back, whether you like it or not. Tonight on the program, we got Lawrence R. Harvey of the Human Centipede 2 and 3 fame. He's a very well-read man. We were happy to have him. We actually had this interview lying around, so why the hell not? Also, Jonathan Rodriguez comes by and raids the fridge, as I like to say. Johnny Anderson gives us a new cartoon to play with, and we talk about the elephant in the room, the new backdrop, provided by Jimmy O'Neill himself. All this and more on your movie night. Live from Ocean View, Delaware, but not, it's your movie night with Will DeVacus. Special guest, Mr. Lawrence R. Harvey of the Human Centipede series. Main theme by Here Come the Mummies. Oh, yeah. With additional music by Adam Dick Clifton. And now, because good help is hard to find, here's your host, Mr. Will DeVacus. Thank you. Simmer down, simmer down. Hello there. This is your movie night. I'm Will Avakis, and because hate is gonna hate, this is season two of a show you've even heard. Hey, never... hey, 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 hey! Who the hell are you? Is this the U.S. Capitol? No, this is a talk show set. We're doing movie night with Will Avakis. Is that like Letterman or something? <laughs> no. Shit, I'm in the wrong place. Yeah, we're fun looking. Fuck, jeez. I tell you, the kind of characters we get around here, he kind of looked a little bit like Orson Welles, didn't he? Oh, yes. You ain't no Craig Kilborn. And you ain't no... Whatever. <laughs> I couldn't come up with anything. My God. Um, so some things have happened. It's a new show, which means it's a new year, which means I need to do some New Year's resolutions. Now, I kind of screwed up on that whole parade. I've missed a couple of months. One of my New Year's resolutions was to, you know, do more shows for the good people who like to watch this show. Well, I fucked that one up. I mean, let's be, <laughs> let's be serious. I've really screwed the pooch there. I mean, what is this, halfway through March, and this is the first episode of season two? I apologize. The second thing that I don't want to do, but the, the, the cast and crew of this show have begged me to do is, uh, lose some weight. Ready? <laughs> I have to lose some weight. I didn't believe it until uh, one of our editors compiled a little bit of uh, footage from last season showing how fat I really was and how much weight I really need to lose. How fat was it? I didn't ask you. I didn't ask you. Don't, 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 don't come on my show and heckle me. When I ask you questions, you talk. When I laugh, you laugh. When I tell a joke, you laugh. Capiche? I didn't ask you. Can we start this thing over? I didn't ask him. I didn't ask you. I didn't ask you. Gosh. So we have an editor here who has compiled all these shots of me looking fat, apparently. And spitting as well. Let's uh, let's roll that clip. I can't wait to see this. What was with the carnival music? <laughs> Whose idea was that? It's in a size fat. Hey! <laughs> Jeez. All right, I want to talk about the I want to talk about the elephant in the room and not that guy back there. Uh, <laughs> hey, how did, did you get that shirt? That's a nice jacket you got there. Oh, what, did you get it in a size fat? Oh! Oh, 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 oh yeah, yeah, yeah. How's it feel? It doesn't feel good, does it? It feels pretty crappy. Can somebody get me a diet coke with a? Two double cheese burgers. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about the elephant in the room, and it's this backdrop right here. We have a brand new backdrop, courtesy of Mr. Jimmy O'Neill. 
After I, uh, do I still have some semen here? <laughs> After I did a few things for the man, he decided to buy and donate this to us. We wanted to make it look really cool, so we decided to update the backdrop, make it look more professional than what it was, but it looked pathetic, didn't it? It looked like fucking shit last time we had one of these. So we have, we have a new backdrop, and if you look at the, the, uh, the moon here, we actually have the Jimmy O Show logo very faintly in the moon. Can we get a can we get a shot of that? No, nope. no okay. I guess we'll just have to fuck myself then. I guess. So we'll get a we'll we'll get a cutaway of that. But uh, thank you, Mr. James O'Neill, Jimmy O Show. Check him out on YouTube. If you want to check him out, I'm usually on his live streams on occasion. Uh, like and subscribe to all his stuff. He's a very very funny guy, like gut bustingly funny, and he has a lot of friends on there that are really funny too, like uh, some really interesting characters, like. Rapey Davey and uh, Tony Two Beams and <laughs> Mr. Sean Ryder, you say? So there's some interesting cats on that podcast. And if it wasn't if it wasn't for Mr. James O'Neill, we wouldn't have the guest that we highlighted three months ago, <laughs> but are showing now, <laughs> Mr. Lawrence Harvey for the Human Centipede films and a movie called The Editor, which was really really good. <laughs> so he's on the program tonight. <laughs> but first, before we get any further. Here are your headlines. This week's headlines are brought to you by Millsboro Music. Was that a boo? It was a woo. Oh. oh, it was a woo. Oh my God. Don't make fun of me. Is that guy okay? It sounds like he just got. Did you just come back from Hardy, sir? I'm fine. Okay, just making sure. The Space Jam sequel director, Malcolm D. Lee, says that the uh, sexy minx known as Lola Bunny will be less sexualized in the new film because, uh, you know, his, <laughs> his reasoning is because it's a kid's film. Oh. Why do you guys seem so disappointed? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, this is not hardcore porn? What the H is this about? No, 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 Lola Bunny... Uh, <laughs> You guys really get off from fucking, like, rabbits? Like, oh, yeah, these huge... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Basketball shorts. <laughs> you know, when I heard... When I heard the, I don't even want to do the joke anymore. It's not even funny. <laughs> <laughs> Let me try this again. Because it's a kid's film. Yay. Oh, darn. Because, honestly, I was only going to buy a ticket to see this movie to see a sexualized, thunder-thighed, big-titted bunny rabbit running around the screen. <laughs> You know, they're playing basketball, too, so you know... God, I'm, a I'm a major misogynist here. So I'm trying to work this teleprompter, and I'm not getting it to work really well. Oh, there it is. I'm going to stop. <laughs> hey, it's a new show, new technology. We've had this for the last few episodes. Uh, <laughs> um, but, you know, seriously, overly sexualized. A cartoon rabbit. Kids movie. Why didn't anybody tell that to the people that made Roger Rabbit? I mean, you can always do what Disney did. Anything is okay as long as you put a disclaimer in front of it. Racist? Disclaimer. Might have racism. Smoking? Might have smoking. Curse words? Fuck it. You know, I don't know, folks. Listen, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. I guess at least now soccer moms won't be bitching. Instead, the, uh, the furries will be offended. <laughs> we have a fur in the audience. I knew you were offended, sir. <laughs> but seriously, guys, I wish we lived in a world where only soccer moms were offended. Like, seriously. Now, now we live in a world where everybody's fucking gets pissed off over the littlest things. And, so, and honestly, soccer moms, they're fucking hot. But to be completely honest, I don't really remember the movie that much, the first one. And I don't really remember the, the, the rabbit being overly sexualized. I, I do remember uh, there was a deleted scene where Lola Bunny did give Bugs fellatio. But uh, you can, that's, that's, that's only on the dark web. Uh, Nobody... Like, come on, guys. Nobody gives two fucks about that rabbit. Whether it has tits or not. 
Except for that one creepy guy up front here. We gotta, we gotta ugh, start screening these guys. Andy Serkis came out and announced that he used to walk on all fours while preparing his role for uh, Gollum in The Lord of the Rings. Yes, folks, this is, this is actually breaking news. <laughs> to be honest, that's actually how I prepare for my show. I walk on all fours. You okay there, sir? Making sure. The Golden Globes happened recently, and some people won some awards. Woo! Woo! Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> the, only, the only person who didn't win an award uh, was this guy. Let it soak in. Quiet Place 2 moves up a few moms for a May slot, which is actually a good thing. If only we could get No Time to Die to stay put. <laughs> Speaking of No Time to Die, No Time to Die has been pushed back to 2050. Mm. Movie Night got an exclusive sneak preak, preak, sneak preak at a, uh, at a, whatever. We're all human here, except for that guy. <laughs> Got a sneak peek at a, uh, a frame from the movie. Here's a special frame from No Time to Die that is exclusive to movie night. That, that's kind of, that's, that's not cool. Who did that? <laughs> I mean, it, it is supposed to be his last movie, but come on now. Anyway, the rumor has it that No Time to Die is supposed to get a uh, September release, which, you know... Thank fucking God for that. I've been dying to see this movie for a while. Shudder, the horror streaming service, has ordered a third season of Creepshow. Oh, good. <laughs> maybe, just maybe, if we make enough noise, they'll give Mr. Tom McLaughlin, friend of movie night, a shot at directing one of the episodes. Don't you guys think that we should give Tom McLaughlin a shot? Yeah. You better clap, sir. That man is a scholar and a gentleman, and I thank him. So, all you guys out there at Shutter, please, I'm gonna keep emailing you until you do it. I'm probably on the block list now. Steve Rose from The Guardian has written a series of articles called Hear Me Out where he tries to make a case for all those older films that weren't well received. Well, honestly, Stevie, I'd like to see your article on Ninja 3, The Domination, but that's another story. This week's article was about the Guy Ritchie King Arthur movie. You know, Stevie boy, I think there's one other guy that liked that movie. This guy. <laughs> if you... <laughs> if you want to check out Steve uh, Rose's views, uh, there's a link in the description. He actually has some pretty good articles, and you know what, the, you know, we're cracking jokes here, but I do agree with most of what he says. Some of these films are pretty good, in my honest opinion, but take a look. Link's in the descript. I'm trying to be hip. <laughs> Lady Gaga's two dogs that were kidnapped were found safe and sound, which is nice. But uh, anybody, anybody know how the dog walker is doing who got shot? Like, what's that guy up to? Is he, is he all right? He's dead. I mean, I'm glad the dogs are fine, but, you know. All right, if he's good. Also found safe and sound recently was uh, Richard Simmons. <laughs> who, who, come, come on, who wrote this? I don't want to make fun of Richard Simmons. That guy cries a lot. Um, <laughs> Buffalo Bill's house from Silence of the Lambs is now a bed and breakfast. Complete. <laughs> complete. <laughs> sure. Complete with moths, a dog named Precious, an in-ground prison, and if you ask really nicely, they'll cook you some fava beans and give you a nice shanty. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so now, and now if you want, you can role play as Buffalo Bill with your significant other and say famous lines like, Oh, wait, is she a great big fat person? Or, uh, would you fuck me? I'd fuck me. I'd fuck me hard. Oh, yeah.
So in case your significant other likes to tuck their penis behind themselves and do a little dance, there you go. Have at it. Anybody want to go with me to the Silence of the Lamb's house and go on a vacation? We're doing a story. In a world where everyone is offended by just about everything, Mr. Potato Head uh, loses the Mr. and Mrs. title. Dr. Seuss's estate is putting a... Uh, putting six books to bed due to, the, to, to them being ethnically uh, insensitive. So you guys cancel that, but nobody cancels this stupid shit? <laughs> I'm not talking about the woman either. I, I'm talking about whatever the fuck she did. Like, that's ridiculous. You know what else is ridiculous? You guys remember that little thing called the cinnamon challenge? I mean, come on. <laughs> You guys are canceling children's books, but you're not canceling that. You know what the problem with us as, as, as today, the United States, the world, you know what the problem with us is? We make stupid people famous. You know, I always believe that we should never get rid of the past because, you know, it, we, we could possibly learn something from it. Maybe not. It's not like we're, we're banning books called uh, Horton Hears a Hate Speech. I remember when there was a time where if somebody didn't like something, they just move on with their day. Not watch it, not read it, not even talk about it, not even look at it again. And honestly, probably in about a week, they forget about it. Now, everybody's on their high horse telling them exactly how they feel about it and how other people should feel too. And if, they, if you don't agree with it, they'll gaslight you into believing what they believe. It's crazy, some of these people. That's just my opinion. Now, there are some horrible atrocities that go on in this world. Terrible. Some of them should be canceled. Use your best judgment. You know, as Bill Maher once said, when what you're complaining about ends up sounding like an Onion article, you should probably stop. But anyway, that's just my two cents, gang. Well, I saw that coming. I've been canceled, folks. <laughs> I'm sure when they, when they ask a member of a hate group, you know, why did you join? I'm sure they're going to say, hey, it was that fucking rabbit in that goddamn cartoon. <laughs> why did I join the, this uh, the KKK? I joined because of the Aristocats. <laughs> I mean, fuck. Aladdin teaches men to lie to women to get what they want. But fuck. You know, when I saw Aladdin, I didn't think about any of that shit. You know what was going through my mind as a young kid? Not to go be a hateful person. I was like, holy shit, there's a talking parrot that sounds like Gilbert Godfrey. That's what I was thinking. You know, this parrot's flying around going, I'm Gilbert Godfrey. I thought that was great. And then you had Robin Williams as a, as a genie. I was like, holy shit, it's a colorful musical cartoon. And we're canceling cartoons. There's, there's groups out there going, that Pepe Le Pew should never work again in Hollywood. And you're banning a cartoon. How ridiculous. Now, I know somebody's going to come out and be like, um, Mr. Will, we're not banning him. We're banning what he stands for. He is a rapist and a, and a whatever the hell he is. He's a skunk cartoon. People, who are we bullshitting? I mean, come on. Kids don't learn how to be racist from Dr. Seuss or a fucking Disney film. They learn from their surroundings, their parents, other people that they're associated with. That's where it needs to start. And you know where that all is? Education. There's like three people who don't agree with me in the audience, and I love it. Listen, guys, when we come back here, we got Mr. Lawrence Harvey from the Human Centipede Films and also the movie The Editor. We got a great interview with him. So stay tuned. Don't click away. Don't cancel me. You know, this is really good. Hey, what's in this? It's an old family recipe.
Come on, spill the beans. <laughs> I'll never tell. <laughs> You're lost. Oh well. Mm. It's so good. Here we are. We're back. And I've missed you. We have special guest on the show, Mr. Lawrence R. Harvey. You might know him from The Human Centipede 2 and 3. He's here today, and he is not going to stitch us up ass to mouth. Despite, you know, that's what I want. Uh, here, here he is, Mr. Lawrence R. Harvey. <laughs> hi there, hi there, Will. <laughs> Lawrence, how, how, how are you doing, buddy? All right, not too bad, not too bad. Keeping uh, virus free and uh, safe and secure, and trying to fill time between long-awaited jobs. <laughs> are you are you getting much work these days? Uh, I just uh, did some filming uh, recently, which uh, I think you know about, um, but um, everything was kind of moved to next year. Um, I was supposed to be in L.A. in uh, April uh, doing something for the guys that made Bloody Bloody Bible Camp. Uh, they're making a new film, um, a kind of set in the 60s in L.A., and uh, I was just going to do a small part in that, uh, but then... I guess that's moved to whenever now. So, I I want to I want to ask you. Uh, we we've been seeing a lot of things on the internet about you and, and different projects. And this picture kind of arose that I saw, and I instantly knew what it was, but a lot of people didn't. They they were speculating. And uh, you know, uh, you're working with uh, James Campbell. He's a director, and you're doing a Batman film, and you're playing the role that you were born to play the penguin. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, in fact, that's what I said when James approached me about playing him. So uh, uh, the book, that was the ro role I was born to play. So, so yeah, I mean, James had done, a few years ago, did a fan film called Ripper, which was the sort of Batman versus Jack the Ripper. Uh, it's about... 25 minutes it's on YouTube I think at the moment um, but obviously in the world of fan films you can't make money out of other people's intellectual property copyright or whatever it is intellectual properties so um, but at least uh, the studios are sort of willing to let uh, you do sort of fan films uh, so yeah um, and yeah sort of James was working on a, a different film, uh, a feature film, uh, and then obviously with COVID and that being sort of um, shelving everything and throwing a spanner in the works, he wants the wants the sort of um, wants things eased up a little bit over here. Uh, he he invited me, he decided to go ahead with shooting this short fan film. Uh, so again, it will be a, a sort of twenty five minute, half an hour thing um it's called 1986 and it's a batman and punisher fan film so there we go <laughs> i want to ask you how you know a lot of people have played this this character danny devito played the penguin uh there was some speculation about philip seymour hoffman playing the pe penguin which would have been interesting but how are you taking the material how are you putting your own spin on it well i mean james kind of wanted the penguin to have a, an east end gangster kind of vibe about him because uh, i think with uh, on one of the video games uh the penguin has a sort of uh, east end villain kind of uh accent so there's that kind of vibe but then you know when when i'm playing it i sort of bring my own self to it and for me getting in in the mindset of the villain was very much kind of you know, um, Bob Hoskins in The Long Good Friday. Uh, it, was, it was very much that kind of uh, 
that kind of kind of a little bit of front, a little bit of amusement, a little bit of uh, uh, sort of simmering violence there. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's that's uh, how I got into the penguin. So do we see the penguin kick some 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 ass in this film or? Uh, no, you get him to see boss have a, boss about some minions, and uh, they uh, they kick they kick ass. So, the human centipede too. Um, what 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 went through your mind when you got that script? Um, well, first of all, I was invited to a casting uh, to audition with Tom, um, and at that stage, the film hadn't been released; it was just on. The festival circuit, and because it had played at Fright Fest in London in August, and this was kind of February March, the following year, um, I'd sort of read the reviews from Fright Fest. Uh, it also been at Fantastic Fest in Atlanta, uh, uh, Austin in Texas, and so so yeah, I I I was intrigued by what I'd read and. Uh, yeah, so I just I, I wanted to see the, the film as well, and, and Tom was screening uh, the Human Centipede for for people that were coming down for interviews for cast and crew uh, uh, auditions. So, so yeah, I, I went down to do it, and then Tom described uh, there was no script. Tom described every scene uh, and what was happening in every scene uh, piece by piece. So the, you know, the the audition took about sort of like 50 55 minutes you know it was like uh you know you usually you, you know at, at a bad audition you're in and out there really quickly e even a good one you're there for like 10 minutes maybe you know so this was a, a 50 minute interview <laughs> so, uh, so yeah it was and tom was sort of explaining scene by scene and i was going oh oh that's like uh that bit in society or oh 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 that's like the guinea pig trilogy or the all night long uh, the, the All Night Long trilogy or, you know, so it was kind of, I know he, I, I knew he was going for a gory, you know, he was going for a, a kind of gore film, but at the same time, something with a bit of, you know, a bit more to it as well. So, so yeah, it was kind of interesting. I was really excited by it. And I think he, uh, we, we kind of got on like a house on fire. And uh, I, th I think we kind of, he kind of egged me on to do, sort of act out the different parts that he wanted to see me try, like uh, uh, bashing in my mother's head, oh, the character's mother's head, uh, when she rips up his his uh, uh, scrapbook, and uh, then when he's being bullied at work, and then uh, when he goes to uh, <coughs> rape the um, uh, back end of the centipede, the final segment of the centipede. So Tom was kind of like pushing me and pushing me, and I was sort of, really up for it and doing that and and yeah it was a great kind of interview it was a great audition and that so when people ask about the script it wasn't really a script until it came time uh you know until a few weeks before shooting so yeah and then and then when you get it it's kind of all in this kind of uh Dutch English, <laughs> so 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 the the dialogue sounds like a, a Dutch person speaking English. So then you've got to make it your own as well. So, uh, but yeah, it was uh, all the ideas were there, and it was it was kind of interesting. Yeah. We we have a, a fan of yours. Uh, we have some uh, guest viewer questions, and uh, I'm going to play this segment for you, and you just answer at your own, uh, uh, however you want to answer it. And we'll, uh, it's a little bit uh, out there, but he is a fan of yours, so. Lawrence Harvey, my man, I got a question for you about this interview about you're going to do with Mr. Will Tavakis. When you made The Human Centipede 2, how comfortable were you in the role of Martin? And more importantly, were you comfortable jacking it in the booth? <laughs> Uh, I had a stunt double. <laughs> you had a? Did you really have a stunt double for that? Uh, we 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 had a uh, no. It, it it was me, but we had a prosthetic. Uh, so uh, <laughs> I I was double bagged, and then popping out of the first 
uh, of the outer layer was a stunt penis. So. <laughs> so how does how does Tom Six go about that with you? Hey, we have a stunt penis for you. I, I, I'm used to it by now. <laughs> Look, you know, before I did this, I, I did uh, a play at the at the Young Vic in London called The Man with the Absurdly Large Penis. And it was like a, a sort of metre and a half long. And it was about kind of like it was, so, it was like this, this wide in circumference, you know. Wait. So uh, that's a real play in London. Yeah, yeah, it was a one-man play, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, so, so yeah, I, I, I was kind of... I, I think I was being typecast when... <laughs> so, yeah. Right now, there's probably about a five or six people on the Internet looking up pictures of you from that play going like, hmm, the man with the, the whatever penis. <laughs> that is interesting. Well, it... it, it in the play, as he's kind of talking about his life, when he starts getting aroused, he starts getting faint because obviously all the blood is rushing down to uh, the member. And uh, as he's remembering, uh, the member engorges and uh, he feels faint and starts, uh, <laughs> yeah, fainting. <laughs> So he, so, so the, the the whole play is about whether he could kill him. You know, he might die if he uh, gets too, uh, you know. <laughs> if he gets a hard on it fully, it's gonna kill him. Yeah, he, he won't get a hard on. It's too much. Like it was bigger than my body. <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's... Well, the next time I'm in London, I will try to see that play. <laughs> The, the hell with Phantom of the Opera at the Majesty's Theater. I'm going to go see the, the man with the huge dong. <laughs> Jeez. Now, uh, you you said something about Teddy Bear Picnic. Yeah, I, I did a... I was involved with Thomas Hodge, who's... Uh, he, he does a lot of poster designs and um, you know, for films and video uh, labels. You know, he, he's done a few for... Uh, Vinegar Syndrome leak recently, but he also did like the, the post for Spy, you know, the um, comedy action film from a few years ago and stuff like that. So he um, he had this these great great ideas and these great kind of visuals uh, to do a, a film, you know, based around the song Teddy Bear's Picnic, and he had this concept of it being, and he had this kind of feature film concept. Uh, about this kind of deserted place uh, in the middle of, the, of nowhere where uh, it was a kind of orphanage for sort of, you know, orphanage slash psychiatric hospital uh, where the the inmates used to perform plays uh, and they, they did a special teddy bears uh, picnic kind of play. And... Uh, anyway, so we were trying to get funding for that, and we did this proof of concept short, uh, which is uh, just featuring like a, a scene from that, uh, which is where a, a child and her mother go wandering in the woods and encounter Baby Bear, which is me. Uh, so yeah, that's if you look at uh, Thomas Hodge on Facebook. Or search for Teddy Bear's Picnic on YouTube. You you should uh, find it. Uh, yeah. And the link will be in the description for those who do want to see that. Now, Lawrence, that's all the time we have. I want to thank you for coming on the program. And if you stick around, we'll have an even longer talk. And folks, the unedited, uncut interview with Mr. Lawrence R. Harvey will be on YouTube later in the week. Stay tuned. Don't click off this page. Love you. That was good, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah, it was okay. Could have been better. We've been holding that one in like a fart at a party, folks. We've had that one hanging around for a bit. That was uh, Lauren Arkansas Harvey. And uh, great actor. If you're looking for an actor, this guy is a good actor. Very, very well-read. Very smart guy. So check him out.
All right, so we're doing a new segment here. It's called the One Minute Movie Review. Uh, so today we're gonna we're gonna do a review. We're gonna do it one minute. We have a timer, please. After one minute, I have to be stopped. Uh, we have a new review rating system, um, and we're gonna review Willy's Wonderland. So are you ready? Yep. Here we go. And in th three, two, one. All right, Willy's Wonderland. Is a, has a silent but deadly Nick Cage in it who fights off animatronics. How, you say? Well, he's crashed his car and needs to get his car fixed, so he decides to spend a night cleaning a Chuck E. Cheese-esque restaurant while fending off these uh, attacking robots. That's true. That's what the movie's really about. Um, <laughs> it's true. So... It's a gory film. It's a fun film. It has cult stuff. It, you know, Satanists and whatnot. I enjoyed it um, for the most part. I, uh, as far as the rating, I give it a Scrubber Tuesday. So Scrubber Tuesday it. <laughs> How long is the timer at? Fifteen seconds. I'm done. All right. Hey, I beat it. Yeah, right. Hello. <laughs> I really didn't care that much. Oh. Listen, that was my review. I, you know what? I didn't think it was the greatest film, but it was a fun film. There's stuff there for everybody. Check it out for yourself, though. Whether you go see it on the movie theater, go see it on Scrubber Tuesday, which is like a $5 Tuesday. We're trying to make Scrubber Tuesday kind of fit. I love it. I got it from Mr. James O'Neill. Somebody's a little overly excited about Jimmy O'Neill. Um, We also have another segment here. We have uh, Movie Night's very own Jonathan Rodriguez. Whoa. And we're going to do a new segment called Test the Concession, where we test concession items from all around the world. Different snacks from different places. Some are going to be from here. Some are going to be from there. Some could be from everywhere. And today we have a gummy ghost pe pe pepper. You want to see my pecker? We have, a, we have a gummy ghost pepper with insane heat. Now, the only reason we're giving this to Jonathan is because he is Hispanic and his stomach can handle it. Mine can't. I'll be in the bathroom the next three days. What, am I, am I like the, the racist guy now? Because I said he's a... It's science. I, no, it is. It's true. Jonathan, am I wrong? I'm not racist because I have a Puerto Rican on my show. So there you go. Hey, hey, hey. So, Jonathan, I'm going to open this fucker up, and you're going to eat it. <laughs> and I was talking about my pants. <laughs> you open it. <laughs> Here, you do it. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> There's some uh, Mexican soda down there. <laughs> we're, we're not, what's it called, Haritos? You got any Jumex? Well, show the camera what that thing looks like. Ooh, that smells hot. <laughs> Don't put your lips on it. So tell me, tell me what you're about to do right now. You're about to put it in your mouth. How is it? Is it good? Is it hot? Is it spicy? It is pretty good. It's, it has a cherry flavor, just like those panties. I mean, if it's good, I'll lick the. I'll lick the. Uh, <laughs> right. so, and it's only 120 calories per serving. Uh, there you go. And it's the world's largest original gummy bears. You try it. No, thank you. <laughs> Your hands have been all over it. I don't want to eat what your dick beaters have been on. No offense to you. I don't know where they've been. No, thank you. I would rather have myself some of these Twigglers. When you want to get cavities, eat Twigglers. I can't get them back in now. That's what she said. I opened myself up for that one. So how was it? It's actually kind of getting spicy now. Now after you ate it? Yeah. What's the scovels on that? <laughs> the scovels? I don't even know. But it's not that bad. Uh... I can't. I, don't, I, don't, I can't read it. It's on the package, but I can't read it. Well, fuck it. Uh, and then uh, Jonathan Rodriguez is officially rating this thing ain't shit. <laughs> a 
Apparently it's insane heat and very, very hot. We called bullshit on that. <laughs> Survey says bullshit. But uh, describe how it tastes. It tastes like gum. You heard it here first, folks. Yeah. <laughs> With a cherry flavor and it's, it's a gummy and it wasn't very hot. Nice. Jonathan Rodriguez, thank you for coming on. Just move that camera slightly more on me. <laughs> it's movie night with Will Avakis, not movie night with Jonathan Rodriguez. Yes, please. Somebody get John a drink. Give this man a beverage. I want to thank I want to thank you, the viewer at home, for watching. I want to thank Jimmy O'Neill for letting me just uh, pick into his uh, viewership and pull some of them out. They're very good people. Uh, they, they've accepted me as their own, as a as a scrubber, so I say. And Jimmy O'Neill is one of the kindest people ever. Subscribe, share, like all his videos. Sometimes I'm in them, sometimes I'm not. And uh, you know what? That's all we got for you. That's all she wrote. We'll see you the next time, guys. This is your martini shot. Keep being creative. Love you guys. <laughs> was it really that bad? Taking that painting. Watch me. The man with the absurdly large penis.